All right. Hey, welcome everyone. We are back. It is August 6th and uh, this is the next uh, continuing saga adventure of the Stormbreakers um, in the campaign I call Saviors of the Sword Coast. So if you're following along, this is episode 17 and welcome back. Hey, hey everybody. We are here and say hello to the crickets out there. Wait. Someone just posted. Oh, no, they didn't. Because that was me trying to post. And I was going to be cool and clever and go, ah, oh, look, someone just posted. But it was it was just me. There is no one else uh, watching our recordings live. Perfectly okay with that. Don't be nervous. We're all good anyway. So like I said, I mostly record these for our record. So we can put it on our uh, campaign site and review episodes and you guys ever find by the way a special moment you would like to get clipped or you know made a little short or something and let me know what timestamp it's at and i i need to learn how to do that anyway so it'd be fun i'll figure out how to do it so if you've got a special moment from the game you want to preserve as its own little clip let me know all right so uh, we are in the middle of a fight uh when last we left our gallant heroes uh we were basically in um this matriarch's crypt where Caveta the lonely has um continued to be manifest in this poor uh crypt that is not a happy place to be whatsoever we left with Caveta reaching out with these harpoon-like arms uh, to hit um, Elden and drag his sorry butt across uh, this spiky floor area that's just full of sharp spikes and drag him over to her. But uh, at the very last second, um, uh, Canaeus does a cloud rune and uh, that interposes this... Uh, teleportation like portal so her harpoon arms instead of hitting uh the little elf guy uh instead hits Canaeus, who's 30 feet away and grabs him and drags him through the portal across the spikes and over uh next to her so in the spiked area we also have um zith and uh elden of course um, and Elden has a um, a spiritual weapon trained on that um, that poor lonely. So it now comes to our resident cleric of Moradin. Ezra, go for it. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm gonna let's get moving. I'm in this nope. room. We have trouble getting through a... that door. Yeah, I got to go kind of yeah. because the oh. door's in the oh, middle. Okay, at an angle. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. 30 feet. So let me. No, with with the terrain, what's with the, the floor here? These exactly. are just like. The, still... you, you see there immediately that there are these very sharp spikes all over the place. So. Okay. You, you you get a quick sense that you will not be able to cross that without stepping on spikes or getting gotcha. okay. some of those spo those pokey things. Um, you're, like, you're going to have a hard time maneuvering through there. Yep. You might be able to, but um, it's, it, it would be a tricky maneuver. Okay. Um... All right, I'm just going to attack... Veta. Okay. With. Let's do a guiding bolt. Hopefully, all this will work. First attack of the night. Let's see how it goes. Nice. Oh, okay. So, um, unfortunately, your guiding bolt uh, is met with Kaveta making her saving throw. 
So it looks like she's going to. I don't know if it's a save. Oh, it's that's a, a that's a, a hit against attack. AC. No, you're right. Yeah. That's a hit no. against AC. You no. hit, and so you're going to do 17 points of damage. Nice job. Cool. Um, let's see if there's anything else I'd want to do. I'd probably just yell out to Canaeus and just say, "Hang on, we're we're coming to help you, buddy." <laughs> And Zith will, worry, will sort of, fine. under his breath, Zith will tell you, uh, Ezra, because you're very close, oh, you'll be there in just a second. Great. That's it. Dear. All right, Ozis, it's on you now. You're not sure what's going on. You're like a whole room no. away. But, uh, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, you, you have an idea, but you don't know exactly what's going on. You well, need to go. You'll need to get down there to investigate if you want to know what's going on. I guess what happens, my movement takes me to here. So remember, you can go there, and then if you have more movement, you can hit the space bar, and it will do a waypoint. Just don't forget, you can do that. Um, and then when you're done dragging your way around your plan for how you're going to move, then you can let up on your mouse and hit the space bar again, and your guy will slide along that. But yeah, you're good. Unless you're going to, are you going to, um, I'll move you through that wall there. If you're going to go ahead and move all the way through. I, well, I would, I would have, I mean, to be fair, I was all the way in the corner of the room. You'd, so have, that's one, you'd have to dash, right? So if you wanted, you're already dashing at this point. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 35, 40. So you want to go 45. Okay. So I'll move you over there. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> um, now Kinesis is being dragged right he is grappled dragged. right now and actually as i was looking uh Kinesis, i know you moved yourself back where i left you last time but um you would have come across uh you would have come straight across toward Kaveta, right so i i initially left you on this side because i think that's where you would have been i was just trying to drag you over there and there were like three or four copies of the spiritual weapon installed and such so it was just a, kind of a mess over there but i think she would have left you there because that's a straight pull across um those spikes that you took some damage from so you're there right now you can move out of those spikes without any problem when it's your turn but i, I think that would be the right place for you to be with her pulling you dragging you across those spikes all right, Aza, so this is the setup that you see. Canaeus is is indeed on the ground. He's prone, but he's also grappled. He's got this, um, I don't know, this uh, spiky arm um, kind of wrapped around him and locked in tight on him. So I can see her. Oh, yeah. Yep. She's you sure can. Shoot. Yikes. Do you want some time to think about it? Let me just hit her with a... Um... Spell that does a bonus action? Yeah, no, spell that. <laughs> Let me just hit her with a spiritual weapon. Okay. Yep, you can do that. I feel like I'm missing some stuff here. Anyway, let me um let me take a look. One thing I did notice, uh, by the way, while I was rebuilding all this stuff, is that I wasn't sure, and I didn't really take the time to investigate, but I wasn't sure that you guys have, A, the right number of spells, and B, that you'd prepared the right number of spells. 
if I'm wrong about that, then we're all golden. But I think that. Um, did you place your spiritual weapon? I don't see it. Yeah, it should be right there. I see it. It's I right. Only see, uh, maybe it's right on top of. Is it right on top of? Uh, no, it's right. It's it's right. Alden. It's, ping it. Where is it? Uh, Just ping. Can if I ping it, then it it takes away the right there. Oh, that's uh, not that's not yours. Yeah, that's Elden's. Put, put it there. Elden's. That's Elden's. Well, let me um. There. Maybe hang on. Maybe I'm gonna try and put it here. Yeah, or over here on the other side of Canaeus. All right, you ping by just holding down your left click, right? So here or here, or for that matter, you could put it right here, on this on top of the bottom of the coffin. It's the you know what it is. It doesn't give me any permissions. That's what it is. It's not giving me permission to do it. The warning sign came up. I picked the mace and went all the way through. Let me try it again. And then it just gave you some kind of error. The banner crossed up saying it or not right. Yeah, let me try it again. Yep, operation block due to missing user permission, user file, warp gate. User file browser, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I just saved it, so that's fine. I've just add, added that and saved it. Okay. So if I if I go to my action now, it should do it, right? Well, I think so. Yeah, updated permission configuration. Yep. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, Did it give you the same error? No, now it, there we go. Yep, now you got two maces. A flaming mace and a glowing mace. How did it give me two? Oh, well, I'm right there. No, there's not two. All I only see one. one and you have one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and now I don't have access to any, I don't see anything. I don't have access to anything except that. Okay, well, you need to just click back on your own character or no, draw, all, draw. All or, the tokens have disappeared. Okay, then just draw somewhere else on the map. Draw a little rectangle. Okay, it, it'll, it'll come back. You'll see it. All right. Canaeus, your turn again. Well, well, he does get to attack. I don't know if he actually took a swipe. Yeah. All right, do it. It's on your own character sheet. Yeah. But it brings me back to the configuration again instead of it's asking me to cast a spell. No, 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 no. Go find the one under features. That says... Bonus actions. Yeah, it is a bonus action. Yeah. And it's under your features instead of... No. I or whatever. I went to features and all I got is harness divine. Uh, I'm looking to see if it's there. I don't see it. Yeah. The only place I have it is in actions. Well, and that's the actual spell. Yeah. Maybe inventory? I don't know. That's, uh... So let's what? see if we go... All right. So, anyway, we've got um, this. You can roll to hit. It's uh, a d20 plus your spell attack bonus. And Jesus. you'll do force yeah. damage. If, uh, if maybe I need to update, maybe that's what you do. Maybe you need to update your Chris's pre maze or something. That's yeah, so a roll, Ozis. You have a plus four. Yeah. I yeah. I think it's a couple d8s or one d8. I'm not sure. It's a D8 plus your spell casting ability modifier. Yeah, it looks like a miss. Yep. 
that'll end my turn. Uh, ready. All right, Canis. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I, I am currently grappled. Do I need to make a strength saving or something? Get out of grapple? Yes, we need to do a strength on strength. On that. Are you a giant? I think so. I, just can't I can't find any of our last battle stuff. Uh, it's hard for me to remember. You what? But we'll find out in a minute. Do you remember if I, I did a giant fight already? You did against the the twins, and I think that you either still have it on um, and never turned it off, or uh, or you turned it off and you left the cast it again. Okay, then I'm going to assume I have to cast it again. Okay. So then I'll start with my bonus action, which is Giant Knight. I'm going to stay the size I am and just Zith is screaming at Kanaeth. Get her! Okay. And I need to make a strength saving throw. Saving throw, right? Uh, looks like a check. No, ability check. Yep. And that's your action, right? To make, to spend it getting out of your uh, being grappled. And I need to press Nice. Okay, so would that be his movement or his action? That's his, his action. His action. action. Yep. Yeah. That's my action and my bonus action. Right. So I think in that case I'm gonna use second win. Sorry, wrong thing. Action surge. Action surge. I can't find on my hot bar. I feel like you know what that is. There it is. Okay. So now I can attack. I'm sorry, Lady Cavetta. Oh, I'm going to set you free. Is this the one, Kanaeus? Uh, yeah, don't, don't waste it yet. Okay. This is just a, a normal action. Okay, that's my first attack. Okay. And now I'm going to take the, the attack of opportunity and move out of the spike. Yeah, I don't want to be okay. more than I have. All right. And question, can I be in the same spot as this thing? No, I don't thing, think do I you... To... No, you need to be in a different spot. So, I'm going to move... Yep. All right, so she will... Uh, very, very obviously, she's going to... Once again, try to do a sorrowful embrace. And remember, I have protection on evil and good, so she does that disadvantage. Right. Good point. Good point. But I don't see. I remember casting. That was a big deal. But I don't see it. All right. So we are going to um, try to use the arm again. Nope. That looks like a big miss. Ooh. So she tries to lash out at you again as you run by and uh, fails miserably as you duck underneath her arm as she tries to lash out at you again. Okay. All right. Very good. Then it's only my turn. You may. Yeah, we're going to move you one more, right? Uh, why would I move you one? Because there is a spiritual weapon in that spot. There's oh, okay. One... I did not realize that. Yeah, there's one here, and there's one here. 
I did not see the one there. Okay, that's okay. going to affect me by Lee Cavetta. You want to do what? No, I'm just saying that's going to affect me fighting Lady Cavetta. Yeah, it is. But Ozus can move it. All right, Zith. Back to you, sir. And so then Zith Elden, you're on deck. Zith would yell out to uh, to all three guys. Ezra, um, Elden, and uh, and, uh, and Ozus. Which one of you wants to fly? And I'm asking which one of you needs to be close to be effective. I'm guessing Ezra. Yeah, it would be, it would be me. Ozus, I... would you like to get up close and personal? Yes, what? Well, I've got my spiritual weapon there. That which should be right here. Yep, yep. But you don't want to get close. You you don't want to get close, or you're all good. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't see any reason to get close. Because see, oh, like I'm the tankiest. Right? I'm the tankiest person besides Canaeus, really. Well, I'm moving you, and you better get open up a real big inflict wound spot because I got you. Um, but Eldon, would you like to get close? Uh, certainly not. Certainly not. Okay. <laughs> Easy, easy for Shivi. So um, Zith would turn to his priest friend and uh, and say some words. Um, and at the end of it, he would say, "Fly, Ezra, fly, get her." Um, and I don't know. I cast, I cast it. I don't know what happens, but uh, I did cast it on you, right? How yeah, many yeah, people? Fly. I can send you all there. That's why I asked. Well, I get um, yeah. Send me here then. Send me. Put me right here. Well, I mean, I'm just going to give you the ability to fly. What you do with it is your call. So, um, so I'm going to upcast it, uh, Jim. So I'm just going to recast oh. it on um, on Ozus as well. I'm just going to cast again and not use the spell slot, so he gets the effect. But okay. I'll mark off a fourth level spell slot. Um, I've never done this. I'm very excited. You cannot maintain concentration on one more effect. Um, no concentration. No spell slot. That so you're be... you're giving both Ezra and Oz's fly. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and I will check off the spell after I I'm done. Um, uh, Zith the the hero that he is, is going to move way back here and just says, encourage Ezra specifically. Uh, I know about, yeah, you know, I know clerics are known to inflict wounds at a close di a distance. Please use that. I foresee your success. Um, and I'll leave it there. Nice. Okay, Eldon. From your vantage point, uh, there's just a sea of spikes between you and the enemy. What are you going to do? All right. I will, uh, bonus action, uh, use my uh, spiritual weapon. Okay. So I think you do have on your character sheet, you do have a spiritual weapon attack under class features. Yep. That's what you would use to roll it. That pop up. Not yet. All right. Uh, you look like you're recasting the spell. Are you? Uh, no, I'm trying to hit the icon because I've targeted this thing. Um. Okay. There we go. Yeah, just recast it. Why did you recast it? That's not what I'm looking for. All right. Huh. So, oh yeah, so it removed the, the thing. So, hmm. All right. So on the sheet, let me see. Does mm -hmm. it show up? Show I do up have it. On... I do have it on the sheet, but. Not anymore. It's gone because you yeah, recast okay. the spell, so it removes it. <clears throat> okay. I 
lost all pretty much the vision. I can see the background, but nothing else. The animation is kind of whack too. Right. So I don't know what caused that, but um, all right. So do you see now on your character sheet under class features? There is a spiritual weapon attack. It actually just says spiritual weapon dash attack, and it's a bonus action. Do you see that? Mm, I'm looking on your character sheet itself, which, uh, yeah, it's there. It's like third from the bottom when I look at it using the classic layout of the character sheet. I think that's what you have. I've got the, uh, I think I have the more updated one. Oh, okay. That's what mine's defaulted to. Oh, okay. Uh, I can switch to that, I guess. Let's see. Sheet. It's an NPC sheet, so I don't know. Let's see what happens. No, nope, it's the same one. So you have actions, attributes, features going across yep. kind of the front. Okay. Yep. So go to features, scroll down, mm -hmm. third from the bottom, spiritual weapon attack. Do you see that? You have spell casting, divine eminence, and then spiritual weapon attack going from the bottom up. Yes? That's spiritual weapon. This is what it looks like. It's going to be a picture. Sure. Not a video. What are you doing? Now, what I did is I went back and I defaulted. I I, I set up the default uh, character sheet. See if that makes a difference. Okay. Yeah, let's see what happens with that. So I'm just pasting it into the chat so you can see. Uh, hopefully this will paste in. All right, so you can see that third from the bottom it says spiritual weapon attack. If you look in the chat. See? No. Uh, features actions. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, access. Yours doesn't to... have that. Yeah. So what I what I've got is uh, if you're under features. Mm -hmm. So. I've got attacks, actions, features. I don't have. I can't do anything to make those uh, drop downs open. Oh. Maybe he doesn't have full okay. a, full access to it all. Then, well, I think I have everybody. I mean, I'll go ahead and turn on all of the features. Modify configuration settings. Don't make me lock this back down, gentlemen. All right, because of accidental changing or whatnot, right? So, so what I did do, I actually just... created Elden in D and D Beyond. I could link that to this if you want me to. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> All right. Give me a... If so, you wanna, that's fine. So uh, for this round, just roll your... Just roll a d20 to hit. Okay. We'll add Elden's spell attack bonus, whatever the heck that is. And we'll be good with it. I'm good with that. For that one... Oh, I know something that may. Does it ask you to confirm your target? I already, I already uh, clicked okay. on it. And selected You've seen that. So okay, that. good. That's new. We used to do that, and then it disappeared one day, but it's back again. Okay. So I'm, I'm uh, showing. Uh, I just ran the attack for you. Okay. Because I'm gonna get to it apparently. Um, okay. And so you rolled a 19. That hits Cavetta and does six points of damage. So it applied the six points of damage. If you're cool with that, that's better than what you rolled, so we'll yep. take it. All right. And then, uh, if you that, want to c yep. create a new, you should have the rights to create a new actor. Okay. And do you know how to import D and D Beyond? Yeah. All right. Cool. Then I'll let you get that. So started. and then after that, I was gonna, if you want to just move things forward, I was going to do uh, Sacred Flame uh, as a cantrip. Sacred Flame. Do you want me to roll it for you while you're doing sure. your thing? All right. Already targeted. Let's roll. All right, 
So we're going to do 2d8 worth of damage. So 10 points of damage if she doesn't make a saving throw. And she fails her saving throw. Whoa. Yeah, Good. right? That was a bad roll. But okay. There we go. We did some flame. Burn to Veta burn. That's right. Twin flames, baby. All right. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll end your turn. Moving on. Uh, all right. Guess what? The lonely gets to move. So she is going to run over to here. Oh, okay. And Opportunity attack? No? Oh, because she stayed right there, yeah. Yeah, not from... I get an opportunity to That's what I was asking. Um, you... Yeah, yeah because of the 90, 90 degree rule. Yeah, you'd get an opportunity to attack. Go for it. Well, you see, recently I've taken out the Warcaster piece. My attack I'm a little special now. Oh, it won't let me... Uh... Oh, nice hit. God, I've been waiting to do that for so long. Ooh. Look at that. 30 points of damage. That was yeah, nice that beat. So, Jim, is she going to move? Not any further. You, you got... <laughs> So she's like, oh. And so she just tries to grab you right from where you're at, right from where she's got you. So uh, let's do this. Uh, oops, that's not correct. I need to do the harpoon attack first. All right. Is that a disadvantage? Is that a ranged attack? Oh, no, it's melee. Dang. Yeah. It's a melee attack at range. All right. So it looks like. You're going to Hellish Rebuke her? Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Get it, jerk. Love it. It's, I feel like it's more of a celestial rebuke, but, you know. It is. It is. Ooh. That's the way I see it. I will say, as she attacks me, I, I'll take the damage right to my shoulder. It's, it's, better. <clears throat> it's time yeah. to go home. She turn. successfully hits you and um, is going to do her damage to you. So you're, you're going to be hurt. Um, oh, yeah, no, I, I'm taking the wound. You're going to my decision. Yeah. And so you also um, need to make a DC 15 wisdom save. Oh, it's like you, you did save. You did make that save. I did. So. Uh, Here's what you here, here's what you feel as she grabs onto you this time instead of dragging you across everywhere else. You just feel overwhelmed by the sorrow as you recoil and bring on the radiant strike back to her in revenge. Um, you you feel um, a Kaveta whispers about her love for her children to you, the Dolandar twins. She laments how she could do nothing to protect them from the curse that isolated them all. Her voice breaks as she recalls her last moments with them when they still believe they could escape their fate. As her harpoon arms lash out, you see flashes of Kaveta's memories, her family, uh, family's sudden and unjust exile. You see that tearing away from her homeland where she held it so dear. She wasn't evil. She was misunderstood. <laughs> she loved, she loved, she loved her homeland and wanted to explore other places and do other things. Um, In this moment, along with the despair, Canaeus feels this is familiar. This is real. Canaeus, unlike everyone else, is from Neverwinter. 
he wanted to explore other places. That's why he left to go to Mandalorian, to go to Laylon. But he always knows Neverwinter is his real home. He understands, you know, at least a little bit more, more than the others probably, what she's going through. <clears throat> As your radiant light sears along her um, stretched out and rubbery like arms back to her um, body, you feel the toll of isolation uh, that it took on her mind. She speaks of endless nights spent alone, longing for the comfort of her family. And as her form falters in front of you, searing away, threads again, wisps, uh, vanishing into the air around her, you see that um, uh, you feel the weight of her loneliness, a void that consumed her heart and soul, and now she is gone. Once she disappears, and as literally just having a punch, several puncture wounds in his body, weeping blood. He will uh, just slouch against the coffin and just honestly just kind of cry for a minute. For Kaveta and also her uh, and her family, but also a little for himself. She's like, he understands at least a little bit her pain. The longing just to go home. And the despair that she'll never... And now he knows the despair of what it felt like to know that she will never go home. At least through a second hand glimpse. As you um, collapse against the stone coffin under the weight of your own wounds, the coffin shifts aside a little bit. And beneath the lid, inside where Kaveta's body should be, you see a shimmering pool of light collected at the bottom of the uh, of the coffin itself it is um, just wavering there almost like a rainbow of colors oscillating around and um, you you feel like um, a new measure of hope is in the light Canaeus, go toward the light. Canaeus wants to so badly. They have a job unfinished. He's gonna pull himself up, and he's gonna take a go. You know, he's gonna take a running leap with all his 19 feet of of long jumping. The very edge of the line. How many feet do you I, have to run first before you jump? Ten. I went here, here, five, ten, fifteen, nineteen. So I'm right on the edge of this. So you'll take forty-four of damage. Wait, what? Because you have to run ten feet, and if you start here. Yeah. You run five feet. No, I, start, I, I started here. Oh, okay. But e regardless, you have to go in a straight line, ten I, feet, right? No, I just need to move ten feet before. No, come on. I, I have long jumped several times. I know how this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you will take some more damage. I'm aware. Good try, I'm though. Not Forty-four. All right, 11 more points you of damage. Number, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. Yeah. yeah so I guess the rules um, don't specifically say in the direction you intend to jump, but how many long jumpers do you know that just go back and forth five feet, five feet, five feet, five feet, and then make a really long jump. There is, there isn't anybody, in D &D. Only, yes. <laughs> and in the WWE, right? But they then spring against the bands of the, you know, the ropes. The, right? the, the only people who actually do that, and I only know this and bring it up because I just watched the Olympics, 
are the people who jump over the bar. They literally like run high jumpers. straight at it. Yeah, straight yeah. at it, and then to the yeah. side, and then right. go over. Yeah, backwards. but it's like that's high jumping, not like long jumping. Yeah. <laughs> it would be awesome if he high jumped it. That's for height on his back. Yeah, um, just flying through the air. Yep, yep. All right. So you take a little more points damage and you climb your way up onto that platform there. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing while he's jumping across and landing on spikes? I would, I would ask Kanaeus what he saw over there. What, could we all see the glowing or no? Yeah, the coffin lid is off. Mm -hmm. And so in this pitch black dark area, yeah, you would see a light. I'll tell you what, let me, let me draw it on there. And then I just need to change the color. Whoops, I turned it off. Yeah, well, we'd uh, okay. be asking, like, Kinesis, why did you come back? Let's go towards that light. You guys can go ahead if you need to, but I need to finish this. I need to free the last fill of darkness. Zith rolls his eyes like, oh my god, okay. Okay, Kinesis, come on. I can't leave them here, Zith. They've suffered too If you're so can like, if it was so easy to leave, like, how do we even know that that that's a game? Kavet has been in this room for, I don't know, hundreds of years. They, they return. All the Dolandars return so that they can, are unable to do any form of cleaner travel. They've been here. It's it literally them. They walk through. Unconvinced, Zith would yell at El Alden. Elden, does this look like we're in the right place? It does. This looks like a dust gate to me, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a fine, crevice of dusk, which is a stable gateway. Fine, Kanaeus. Zip is very cranky. Um, you know, sort of under his breath is that. I just get luck. I just let the priest fly to me. She took my kill. They aren't flying. Now we've got to go find this kid. Let's just do it quick and let's get out of here. I guess okay. fly on those guys. They're not flying. Yeah, Nothing's you're going back right. Here. This is terrible. <laughs> nice. What am I even doing here? And you want to go back. Fine. But let's go, Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Let's just get back here before it closes. I don't think it's it. we're in any need to rush. But on that note, lead the way. I am going to cast second wind on myself. Oh, no use for any of this ability. And I'm going to start feeling light myself again. <laughs> I am actually getting a lot of How did you roll a zero? How did you roll a zero? I don't know, but it does not. No, you oh, shit. I actually, it actually does matter. I don't have a nail. Oh. I just remembered I don't have a nail. I don't nice. think that feeling. Ezra, can you heal me a little bit? I think I can. I don't know how much I have, but let me see. This poor, this poor guy's trying to fly for the first time in his life, and and Kinesis is like, yeah, hey, I want to do is fly. Seriously, they got a, got a bandit and some neo well, priest. It's going to help you getting across the uh, the spikes. If that's right that was the point. point. I had such a glorious plan. It was so fantastic. Um, but well, I guess we'll have to All come right. back. Let's just find. Let's try and do this within about ten minutes. That would be great. I doubt it will take us that long to to kill that other abomination. Should we bring him with us if you're so concerned? Oh no, that was Wait. he can't go to the portal. Oh, why is Osis dead? Osis just died. Well Ozzis. more than just died, my whole character sheet disappeared and that you know when you back when you go step back different versions that erases everything? Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm getting an error message sent. I can't import my character attempting rolling back. See console F12 for oh, detail. Oh, you tried to do an import. Gotcha. 
Well, it worked when I imported just. No, I only, I didn't have anything. I didn't, I, that's why I was saying it was like, I normally would have gone straight for my uh, Firebolt. I'm like, where yeah. is it? Well, because. So it, an yeah, the way the import works is it deletes all the items off your sheet and then re-imports the items. Yeah, well, also deletes it off of D&D Beyond. So I'm, I've been recreating my whole character. That's why I always copy backup. Mm -hmm. Um. So we are not out of the woods yet on our automation no, I can't. stuff. No. Why is his like this? Another, another one. Another one. It's incredible. I hate so my life so much at the moment. Succeeds. I have to say, side note: this other game I played they used a different um, system. I think it was. Fantasy Grounds. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the one cool thing that you could do is you could burn your dice set. So, like, if you were rolling like shit, there was this button that you pressed and it just, like, it literally destroyed your dice and gave you new dice and rolled the model. It was great. It was really cool. Because when you're frustrated at your dice, there's not much you, you can do. Put them in dice jail. Yeah, so you can go to dice so nice and pick a new set. <laughs> I miss a new, yeah. For sure. All right. So, what is your plan? We're not in combat anymore. So, um, we have to free the last cylinder to return the eternal bondage of, of undeath. So they, they, they can find salvation or damnation. In the next and I, Ezra would definitely agree with that. Um, you know, a, a lost soul is something he's not, he doesn't want to, uh, leave behind. Which lost soul are you talking about? The lost in the other room? Yeah. 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 Or car soul, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Sure. I, I'm sorry, guys. I just can't leave behind the last soul and our twin here. No matter what they did him life or their family did no one deserves to be stuck in this place for all eternity even if they left they'd be stuck in this mockery of our of our city god i hate it here Certainly weighing on you. Certainly feel the thickness of it. Ezra, can I have more healing? Uh, you can if I have any. I don't know that I do, though. I'm, like, out of spell slots. So, uh, from, from I have a from potion behind. of greater healing I can give to you. I think I have one of those as well. Let me check. Yes, I have a potion of healing. Don't use that. And, and from behind you, you, you've never seen zipped, or maybe you have. I, have, I forget if I did. <clears throat> from behind you, you, you feel um, Ziff just touch your shoulder and, and uh, mumble some words. <clears throat> and he does this. Not a ton, but should get you through through this next mistake of yours. There's more where that came from if we need it. Now, let's just go. Oh, wait a second. Wait. What happened to the other room? The other... He's right here. He's. I think he's just waiting. We're right here. He was knocking on yeah, the door. Yeah, we just laid it. Yeah, he was waiting in the closet. We were just kind of... Yeah. Ignoring him. Waiting for him. If, if I remember Moaning right, that he's alone. Last one's... Clawing at the door. Yeah, the last Dolandar sister. And we've done all our investigating here that we've... No, no, we're coming back here. We're the, coming uh, back, yeah. Mr. Goody Two-Shoes yeah. just wants to put him out of his misery. Both these guys. I'm rolling my eyes and staring at Oz. It's like, my hand's up in the air like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Is 
And it's so, not from Neverwinter. Neverwinter is a terrible place to live. But it's home. Okay, okay. Let's just get the kid. Now, how do you want to do 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 this? You're pretty banged up. Uh, I'll, I'll tank. Should Ezra and I stand up front? Oh, yeah, Ezra, you have a ridiculous yeah, amount of I'll, I'll tank. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess we just move forward then. Yeah, I'll I'll sneak <clears throat> in front of um, I'll All sneak right. in front of Kanaeus if he'll let me. Oh sure. And just pop right. Sure, was here. it just this one up here? I think it was this door. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, where you're at right now. Yeah. Don't open. So that is this at the ready? Is this at the ready to? to to go in the first thing that comes out of there he'll hold his action with um with uh what do I want to, oh ray of frost oh i don't have it damn it i don't have it ready yet. um i'll hold my action with uh fireball whatever right. comes through that door I'll... i'm gonna hold my action with moving blade <clears throat> All right, I guess so, I can't hold an action because I'm going to be opening the door. That's a free action. You can you can hold an action okay. if you want, or you can just take your action since you're going to do it on your on your turn anyway. So that makes sense. Okay. Let's just um, I I am okay with hand waving this fight. You outnumber the one uh, lost that remains in there. I think um, that you've already done some harm to it before you backed out of the room. Um, yeah, we did, but, and so if you don't want to play out this combat and you want to save the time, I will hand wave the action you can describe. I mean, you've all got everything packed and ready to go. You're ready to let loose on them. Uh, so you can lay into this poor lost, uh, undead creature that has formed from the pure despair of the dead that were in that room. And um, so you, again, do to it what uh, what you did to the other, and the other two, actually. And so eventually it will, it will be uh, completely destroyed and kind of unravel itself like a sweater. Um, and it just like poosh, disappear into the darkness of of this area so I mean, what we didn't set him on fire you could have done all kinds of things to him yeah you guys had a lot of things pocketed and ready to go so you have booming blade you have uh fiery things you've got your cantrips you can let loose if you don't have any more spell slots As zith what were you going to do i was just waiting until they opened the door to firebolt of his ass yeah, so you got a firebolt that you've got a few uh, dice of firebolt there every single time you do it. So you guys eventually just blast the thing into oblivion and it just like staggers back as you're laying into him and he just flops back onto the stairs and it's kind of like shaking and just begins to unravel into the atmosphere. Um, and uh, he is destroyed as well. That. To me, it seems a little anticlimactic to go after you complete the boss fight <laughs> to go back and pick on the easy one. <laughs> so, it's not even that not even that fun. It was great the first time you met them and you're like, oh crap, there's a second one. And you backed out of the room, and but then you went and fought the boss. And so now um, I think you guys, well, if you have proven yourself against the boss, you can certainly beat off everything else in the room, in the dungeon, so. Uh, all right, so Amazing. there you are in the spike chamber in the matron's crypt, and you have to make a decision about what you're going to do. What's the consensus? Can we use something on power to let us all fly? Well, what? Okay, wait. We still have all the stuff that we grabbed from the one room, right? Yeah. I have the. Yeah. You have the globe. It was like Zith pocketed the gold. Then there was a helmet. Who got that? Is that? I think I had that. I had yeah. one of the things. That sounds yeah. about right. 
And then there was a snow globe and what else? And the book of, of Ar Arcturon. The book I and Eldon said he would pay you 500 gold for that uh, once he got back to his uh, bank account. And missing one thing, and that was uh, a necklace. Who, who got the necklace? With the inscription. Oh, I... I think that was Ozzy's. No, I had the uh, globe. So maybe Zith grabbed that too? Kaveta, I give my breath to you. Or my breath is um, yours, take it. Me or Eldon took it, I forget. But yeah, one of us has that too. I have the money, and I might have the necklace. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, um, Ben, hold off on that. Let's see what happens as we go through. You don't need stats right. at this point. All right. So, um, all right. So, what are you going to do? So, this, can you make a fly? Hmm. So, so um, Jim. Ozzis like is strong enough to carry all of you over. Not at the same time, maybe, but a couple of you at a time. Well, I still have oh. the fly, fly spells on me, right? Yeah, you can just fly them across. Can 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 like Zip? I pictured Zip like carefully, you know, his his like four foot nine frame, just carefully maneuvering in between them. Maybe he gets a couple cuts and scars, but like nothing bad. While the other guys are flying, he's like he's like cursing himself for like why didn't you why didn't you give it to yourself, you dumbass? Right. There's certainly no poison or anything. However. Um, it will be difficult to navigate those spikes without taking some damage. So I will tell you that um, it's first off, it's difficult terrain. Yeah. So you'll have to spend twice as much movement getting through it. And uh, you will simply it blades and spikes. So you're going to take 2d4 for every five feet you cross. Oh, okay. So Zip like shakes it off. He's like counting off in and his head like, okay. Um, Kanaeus, you can hold me. I I should be and, able to carry people over too. I have fly still. So. Yeah, yeah. You, should I? Ezra has yeah. fly. Ezra, you grab um. You I'll grab, grab uh, El El Oh, you can grab Elden. I'll grab that. Uh, but I have to recast it because unless Jim, you're okay with us flying back and forth and dumping people off because eventually we could do it. Yeah, I'm saying you're yeah. fine. Yeah. So you just uh, you set up a um, Elden could um, be, and I just fly right there. Yeah. So you set up an airline uh, where you just can fly them back, back and forth. Do they get? That's when they. Um... Oh, Elden. Elden's very broke. <laughs> oh there he is he was hiding underneath okay all right and zith are you gonna cross on your own or are you gonna fly across i thought one of us was carrying him. no yeah one one of them is, I, I was just gonna go me. back carry him and yeah, okay. back. Yeah. yeah yeah all right so that'll save you 18 hit points of damage yeah I'll, I'll i'll take that save i'm sure yeah. we'll need we'll need it so Ezra, Ozis, I think this is the first time that either of you have actually flown under your own power. So what is that like? It's pretty cool. I'm not a demon fly. I don't you know I don't come from that lineage. Ezra would not be a big fan of flying because he's so low to the ground he just is used to being low to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what it's like to be tall? Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right. All right. So there you are over there at the uh, at the stone coffin that is on the other side on this little island among sea of blades and spikes. What do you do? I would defer to Elden for sure. Elden well, seems I'm... like he knows this stuff, and Zip does not. What do you think? That should be safe to trap. 
It should be safe to use to get back, right? You think? Yeah. Is it? What's that? Is this like one of those portals that uh, you can you can tie a rope to someone and they can look through and come back? Ooh, great question. Hard to tell by looking at it. I did it the best again. I got a, I got a six. I should have given myself guidance. Well, I would, I would give you guidance, but I don't think a ten would give you much. So I don't, I don't find anything. I'm looking around, but it's like a waste of time. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> My theory is that if this is a cable death portals are rare, is that right? not right, Tree Sheldon? What's Can that? Can we do coffin? Can we pick I it up? Asking, I was asking Elden. Yes. Stable, portals are I'm, very I'm getting rare. about half of what you say. Tree yeah. Sheldon, these portals are very rare, correct? And I was assuming yeah. coveted? From my understanding, yes. My guess is whatever's on the other side of this portal is probably not going to be happy with us that we used it. I mean, let's hope it takes us home, but for all we know, we could end up on another continent. I don't want to go to Chult. I just got out of here. Chult would be worse. Buggy in there, I hear. So this this appears that is this is where we want to be, to me. Yep. So all, all I'm really saying is we better be prepared to murder what's on the other side of that portal. Right. <clears throat> from from my uh, research and understanding, this leads to Neverwinter. This coffin here, we just get in it. Yes. Uh, this is like just laying the coffin and it takes us right to Neverwinter. Yes, according to my research, nudge the DM. Yes, that's what I understand. <laughs> uh, uh, Oz is just gets. Once again, I am playing an NPC, so. <laughs> he opens yeah. up the coffin and just steps right in and sees what happens. Lays right, down. So you, you fall right through the bottom of the coffin and are once again enveloped in a black void where you are just falling and falling and falling. Wait about 30 seconds. If he doesn't pop back out, then it's just going to You're fall waiting for out. a splat. There's nothing else. No can they see me as I'm doing this? Like, nope, I know. You're just, you, you fall through this pool of light and literally you just disappear through the other side. Oh, wow. Well, Geronimo! And Canace will jump in. All right. So, Canace, you jump in. And again, you Can also... You hear band on the run when we're doing this? Right. Okay. And you fall right through the coffin as well and are falling in um, pure lack of uh, any light whatsoever. It seems like even your own vision. It's nothing to see. So, having bright vision like you do in darkness not helpful i don't even see canaeus i just i Correct. just know me is me okay yep all right the rest of you follow suit yes yeah all right very good so you all mm -hmm. kind of go through and you have a very similar kind of experience you pass through this little pool of light that's more like the event horizon of the stargate and you just go boom right through and um, are caught again in pure blackness. As you fall, um, once again, you begin to see uh, across the world and across the multiverse to, again, more. Um, you, somehow, what you do get in some kind of a vision, you can tell it's not anything you're seeing with your eyes but you're feeling this vision, this sense inside your, inside your mind as if you are seeing it through your eyes. And you see a chamber 
or a cave rather of, I don't know, red crystals or something all over the place. And in the center of that chamber, you see the, um, the desiccated form of a man who is um, adorned in gold and um, jewelry, and he wears um, some uh, parts of clothing that are almost like a toga or something, but it's not. It's just similar in style to that kind of thing. And he wears upon his head a spiked crown. And you could tell that his head just has little tiny wisps of hair that still cling to the dead skin that uh, wraps his skull, the dried leather of skin. And he looks over to you while he is still moving his hands and pulling these white wisps of energy from other places. You can see there are like portals or windows into other places. And he reaches out and he pulls in this wisp and it brings it in and he's forming this this energy ball made up of this wisps of energy. And he looks over as if to look directly at you, his left eye missing, replaced by a pinprick of red light surrounded by perhaps a ghostly image of an eyeball. And his left hand, as he makes the moves, is red and ghostly, like not even corporeal, like the rest of his dead lich body. But he, uh, he looks over to you with his um, left eye leading his gaze and looks directly into your souls almost. You just feel it's piercing you. And he says, ah, impressive. We will meet again. I am sure of it. And then, ugh, Ozus hits first. Ugh, Kanaeus next. Ugh, you guys pile on top of each other. You are in this nondescript tomb, but you can tell just by the feel of even in this crypt, uh, you are no longer in the shadow fell. So we're... Please move. I, I don't face your crotch for the moment. Zithwood, what? What did you say? Canaanis? Canaanis and Canaanis landed. He landed reverse of Austin's. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. I was like, what? You talking about crotch? What? He's. Um, Zith would ask the group if they all saw what he saw, the the figure of Beckman, and Zith would be uh, curiously pleased. But I would ask them if they all had the same experience. Or was it just Zith? Yes, I had the same experience. It is that it's a big guy. He knows how would... And then he's sort of in mid sort of thinking through it, the eye, the eye, he, he, this is, this will bring us to his cult, but it, all, it also tracks us. How does he know where we are all of the time? What? He's a god, an evil it, god of lies and secrets. That's so powerful, so powerful, Knaeus, so powerful. He's also a fucking lich. <laughs> Yeah, no, very powerful lich. Um, and I Zip would like put the. Alive. <laughs> he would put the eye back in the bag of hold, and knowing that nobody's interested in his conversation. Um, <clears throat> is it dark in here? It's. <laughs> is it it's, dark in here? It is pitch black, so your okay. dark vision and other sight will prevail here. Um, okay. It is a very nondescript, very plain, very fairly small um, little tomb. It has a single, um, like, stone coffin 
and um, it is uh, empty. Like there's no lid on it, and all there is is just dust. Like, like this has been here. This crypt has been here quite a long time. Like, really, really long time. You look and you see that there may have been carved things, like carved words, maybe a name on the on the crypt. Oh, dust storm warning. Oh, we're not getting nuked? No. Oh. The civil war has begun. All right. The, uh, <laughs> so the, <laughs> the, uh, uh th there may have been something, uh, inscribed on this, uh, coffin, but it has long since worn away and given way to the ravages of time. Uh, and there's nothing else. There's nothing else to like investigate, right? Nothing in here. Okay. Yeah, it's just dusty and got some yep. rubble from where the stone oh. has crumbled up from age and so on. Zip uh, would start trying to find a door safely. There, there is a door and you open the door. Um, it, it takes some work, but you get it busted open and, um, and uh, on the you are you find yourself in the poppers side of Neverwinter, uh, Neverwinter graveyard, uh, never death, right? And made it home. you are in the in the poppers side to a very plain and nondescript tomb. Um, there is a name on uh, at the tomb, but it is illegible now due to the advanced age of this particular little poppers tomb. It's not kept up. But there is a carved phrase that you can barely make out. It's barely legible in the tomb's doorway. And it just simply says, home again to rest forever. Uh, rest forever? Home again to rest forever. Zith would just take note, um, you know, and in, in the back of his mind, he's thinking like it is this it, it is this crypt for a reason, probably later to investigate if there's nothing uh, obvious to like check out other carvings or looking for some literature or books or anything else. But I get why it would be indescript, but it, it must have some import. This isn't just some random tomb. He would tell the team. If we need to figure it out now, but um, you know, Sith is going to mentally mark this place to come to get, to come back to it some at some point if he needs to. And is there any sign of the of the gate the other way in the tomb that we left, or is it just black? There's nothing there. What is there any oh, sign of in of like the, the ceiling of the, of the tomb? Yeah, like the rift where we could go back if we had to. Um. Yeah, there is a a tear kind of in the stone above. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm I'm good to march on. Uh, Can I guess you know this town? You want to lead the way? Sure. You know, this is the second time I've been dragged out of this reality to go to another plane of existence. I like the other time better, but I was almost eaten by by a, a mega shark that time. <clears throat> I hate Evernight. So we're not in. Oh, no. We don't know if we we're in Neverwinter. I mean, you you can definitely see um, um, Castle Never, and it looks normal. It doesn't look like the skyline of um, Evernight at all. And this is nighttime. It is. It is actually very close. I'm looking for the clock. It is uh, about four in the morning. You we can gotta, guess that the. I'm grateful to be back, but now I'm I'm wondering if where Sparky is. Uh, probably still in the tomb. If we're lucky. So I will lead us back to the tomb we were in earlier. Okay. 
Oh, can I, mm -hmm. Actually, can I send an AF? Yes. Oh, thank God, she's back. So she's there. That means Sparky's there. Yes. I hope so. <clears throat> Kinea is trying his best not to run. We'll try to lead the group back to the other two. We pick up your familiar and Oz's dog. And I have a question. All the items that we brought back with us, are they acting weird? No. Like, I still have the globe. Yeah, no, it's uh, there. You can uh, try to identify it if you want to spend time on that. You're probably due for yeah. a long rest yeah. coming up, yeah? Well, I think yeah. during the long rest, I mean, once we get back to mm -hmm. lay yeah. on, I think. Mm -hmm. That's a few days away, right? You're oh, no, we could do that. Then. Well, is, yeah, is but it? right now I think the thing to do is to go get, you know. Is it, is it we'll work on that stuff like uh, tonight when you guys are sleep or sleeping, but we all need some rest. But why don't we find our, our other mascot first? Sparky, uh, let's uh, go over there and how so how long have we been gone? That's the next question. Um, do you have it's time has been synchronous. It's like like a snap of the finger. No, you've been gone about an hour, and um, okay, yeah, because that's about how long you were gone. Felt like about an hour. Seems like it's about an hour. Okay, so there's no like, X file thing going. There. Right, Missing time passes time. differently. There maybe are some alternate, uh, you know, some other planes that do have time travel differently, but in this case. Um, it's pretty much the same. Okay. So, so what do you want to do? Find uh, an AF yeah. and Sparky. Okay. Sparky. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you go back to the crypt where you uh, found the, uh, the cult hanging out. And as you go into the crypt, you find um, it is uh, empty and all of the robes and um, the other things that were in that second chamber are missing. Eldon is just fine not going back in there. And he will be happy to. He, he tells you to, to please come by the House of Knowledge. And he will buy that book from you for 500 gold. And um, otherwise thanks you kindly for saving him. Uh, he'd be happy to uh, join you in your report back to Daggle Never Ember. Um, to uh, tout your heroic efforts in uh, rescuing um, the people and what happened in you know on the other side of the, the crevice, etc. Um, and so you go back to without Eldon, you go back to the crypt. You find that um, there is no sign of Zamara. She apparently fell into the void with you. At the same time you did, you assume, uh, but there, she's not to be found anywhere. Uh, Anea and um, Sparky oh. meet you oh, right. at, in in the in the first chamber uh, that enters the place, um, and so they will they they greet you. You kind of poke around. There's no other cultists apparently that you can. I mean, you can. If you want to go scour the rest of the uh, original uh, catacombs, we can do that. Um, at this point, um, there's no sign. The place is deathly quiet. It was pretty quiet before, I guess. So maybe you'd want to go explore. Uh, how long are we going to explore for? An hour or two, you guys think? Yeah, it's not a bit right. Let's so you're gonna you check out to the rest of the catacombs, then make sure the cult yeah. has been. Yeah, okay. let's see if we can find any yeah. treasure or any any bling or. Yeah, so you go um, back to where you were, back to the the ritual room, and everything between the entrance and that ritual room, and you find no more evidence of cultists. Like if there were any left. 
they have gone. You do explore the other part of the catacomb that you hadn't been to yet. And um, so that is just inside the catacombs. You walk through the crumbled wall that goes to the other side. And then to the south, there's those water tanks. You never actually explored there. There's a couple of doors there that you never explored. You go into one room. It's just pipes and such. Nothing to see here. But the next room no longer has the padlock on it Oop. that it had before. You find the padlock on the ground and you open the door, which is slightly ajar, and you find the body of the fourth hostage dead in there. He's oh. Been, he's been killed. Oh. How was he killed? Uh, swords. Blades. Okay. And there's burn marks as well, so I'm sure he was magic as well. So Okay. Um, any uh, jewelry on him? <laughs> Um, let's see. So this is Umberto Noblin is Ooh. his, is his name. Um, and he is a little gnome. Uh, not he's a little gone. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's not anymore. He used to be a historian. Um, Ooh. and so he is, uh, he is not there, there anymore, but this, this cell is just kind of soggy. There were leaks and pipes in the ceiling, and so half the room was always wet, um, etc. Little pu large puddles there. Um, he has no treasure. There's no jewelry. Um, you can find maybe uh, um, something that um, will help to identify that he was in this room that you know this was who he was oh, okay. um but um so if you want to take back the proof of death you certainly there's plenty to, to do that with who would we uh, go to good. who would we take him to i don't know maybe yeah, daggle never remember yeah yeah remember and then we would burn him like a burnt offering he's yeah he's pretty dead no. <laughs> then we just leave him to ne never remember to do whatever he needs to do with them. How's Sparky reacting to all this? Uh, Sparky doesn't like it in this part of the place. It's very wet, steamy, wet. So there's water running through pipes that go across the ceiling. There's a huge vat of water um, in the room just outside of where Umberto was being kept. Um, so. Then you go into another adjoining area, and near that area, um, there is a staircase that goes to a particular door. And um, you open that door, and inside is um, a creature. Ooh. And uh, he is, I'm going to say he, because his clothing appears to be almost like a noble clothing um he wears uh kind of like a a whole jacket and a um what's that called an ascot kind of set up there and he's mm -hmm. working at a workbench but nothing else about him appears to be normal humanoid he looks like a sea creature and oh. uh uh he is uh, definitely someone that looks like um, like he's not from around these parts. Like he's like he belongs in the ocean. Oh, like Shadows of In Ismith. Insmith. Yeah. Should we firebolt the room? And uh, he looks over at you, and he kind of rolls his sort of fishy looking eyes. He has uh, over one of his eyes. He has kind of like a jeweler's loop. Oh, okay. Um, and he, it looks like in his hands, he's got some fine tools and uh, some clock pieces. And it looks like he's got some gears and and clock pieces and such. Well, I guess if, there, if it's okay with everyone, I'll fireball the room. No, don't fireball <laughs> quite yet. It's, it's like, 
<laughs> I'm just joking. We I'm still, joking. I guess we, I guess we, int- we introduced ourselves. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't seem too startled. No, he, he actually kind of rolls his eyes and goes back to work. Oz is just kind of curious because, you know, anything that lives in the water kind of, I wouldn't say fascinates him, but kind of like, you know, fire is this thing. You know, he's got a spark. He's a fire mastiff. And so I'm kind of interested. Ziff would pop out, not to open. Yeah, Zith would pop out, not the most charismatic guy in, in the group, and say, hello there, sir. Uh, ooh, my name is Zith Zanira of Waterdeep. Who might you be? Oh. My name is Shenzarim. I'm sorry to bug, your, bug you in the middle of your work, Shenzarim, but what like are you doing see. down here? I am, I'm working. Does he know? Do you, are you working for the cult of Vecna? Ah, those foul beings. No, I, of course not. There we go. Uh, then they asked, what are you working on down here? You know, with the cult literally right out for quite a while, right outside your door. I've been bound by the Water Clock Guild. Oh, you're enslaved. So I am, I cannot leave the crypts belonging to that organization. So, like, what kind of happens if you leave this room? I'm not able to go past the water tank. So I've been staying here just... Fixing the gear work. Oh, Jim, do uh, I know about the Water Clock Guild? Yeah, it's a it's an old guild um, that probably doesn't have a chapter here anymore, but they are related to. Um, there's another guild in Waterdeep. I, the name just escapes me, but it's basically the same kind of thing. They make mechanical they're like artificers and um they tend to make magical devices that are mechanical and there's no longer a chapter i never went to yeah apparently been long gone or or was destroyed during the volcanic eruption maybe um sir when was the last time one of them visited you a member of the water clock guild Fifty one years, four months, two ten days, plus three, twelve hours and forty two minutes, sixteen seconds now. Wow. Can you be a little bit more accurate? That's a, I mean, it's 23 seconds now. Does that help? Uh, so, kind of so, so he, he says he's cursed, correct? Yeah, he's bound. And he's, so at, while he's talking to you, he's putting in one of the final screws of this piece. And he, he looks at it and then he just goes, crash and then it breaks it into a bunch of pieces and he's like okay and he starts putting it back together again he starts putting the pieces trying to sort out how they go back together now that they're shattered all over the workbench oh so he's enslaved magically here yes i will turn to our expert with our resident wizard this, I, you got any ideas I do not know what to do in these situations. I've, I feel like I've heard right. uh, clerics sometimes have uh, restoration spells. I don't know if they handle cursed creatures, but uh, that is 
I mean, I, there is also the chance yeah. that he just hasn't tried to leave, you know? Well, no. I, we... I'm pretty sure he's tried to leave. Did, did we ever take our long rest yet? No, we have not. It's, no, ter okay. it's, ter it's terrifying. You were trying to get your pets yeah. first, huh? Yeah, no, that's Got fine. It. I'm just... Um, and to finish the job. Well, if this guy is cursed, I could try and remove a curse on him. There you go. I will. Do you have that? I will ask him to clarify. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. If we remove the curse on him right here and now, is that going to attract any attention? Sentries or anything like that? Or no. Someone's got it. It's long since it's been disbanded. Yeah. yeah. Around the time the spell players long disbanded. Okay. All right. He Just is, so uh, that up. Earth be gone. Okay. You cast uh, remove curse and find that uh, <clears throat> um, nothing seems to change. Yeah. Um, okay. Shanzism continues to reassemble the clock. Hmm. So this magic is deeper than what we thought it would be. Or it's not a curse. So is it, is it He's like, I be... appreciate your efforts, but it's not important because I I need to fix this clock. It'll oh, goodness, then. it'll take me only maybe a year or two more. I I I'm almost done. So he makes the clocks and then he destroys the clocks. Well, so I have something to do. Honestly, I quite I quite like assembling the mechanisms. Can Zith sort of like what's going on? Like Zith's really he's acting weird. I Zith would have never thought anybody in this position would not um ask to be freed or help be freed. Um, like, is there any sort of perception or like, I don't know, um, I mean, he could get cranky and start to yell, but, um, he's not good at any of those things, but is there like, what's the, like, what's the situation? Like, what sense do I get out of it? Is he really bound? Does he want to be here? Is this some sort of illu illusion? No, he's, yeah, I mean, you want to try to poke him? Uh, no, just like look close no, while he's while he's talking to the other guys and uh -huh. has his back turned. Like, what is going on here? Why would I think that he doesn't want to leave? Uh, make an insight check. Yes, sir. Let me give you guidance. Oh yeah, I, get, I could use that. Oh, he realized. Uh, well, I guess I'll let that fly and on on its own. Um, but I cannot concentrate on anything else. Um, I'll do an inside check. Uh, hey, now crit plus four. Yeah. yeah. So as far as you can tell, he enjoys what he's doing. Um, and you don't know if he's still bound here or not. The guild's long gone, but it's possible that his binding still exists. Um, he then uh, moves his big old fishy head over toward you and looks at you and he says huh I don't think I need this and he throws a flywheel over to you it is pure gold or gold colored at least um, you catch it and it appears to be a part of the clock that he's trying to assemble but he doesn't seem interested in having this piece anymore it is magical. You sense it right away. Mm. Knowing that, would, would I like? Can I get a closer look and see if I sense anything else that he's working with? Be magic. Be magical. No. No. It's okay. Nothing else. Well, uh, sorry. What's his name again? Um, Shanzazim. Shanzarium. Shanzarium. Well, Shanzarium, is there anything else that you could tell tell us about this place? We were here fighting off a cult. Uh, I know you know you know ah. you know them, but there's there doesn't they're seem to be any sign of them. I think they're gone. You've yeah. destroyed them all. 
That's good. I news. wouldn't. I wouldn't say that, but we destroyed enough of them where I think they might have left this place to set up somewhere else. Mm. We just had a very strange experience. We were transported to uh, a, a, an underworld Shadowfell version of Neverwinter. Win- it was terrifying. Have you heard of such a thing? Um. Oh yes, of course. That would be the, that would be the Shadowfell. Yes. Yes. Yes, the city of Evernight. Hmm. It's a dreary you, place. You've been there. Yes. Too, too, very dry. You've been there. Fascinating. I've when's the last places. time you came? When's the last time you came back from there? Six, maybe seven hundred years ago. Huh. Oh. You know, it is really a shame with somebody so sort of wise and traveled that you are bound here. Um, yeah. When was the last time you tried to leave? I, I don't know. It's been, been a long time. Would you mind just trying to leave now? You don't have to leave. I, when I finish, I'll leave. I'll try. I'm, I'm busy. Okay. But I wish you good luck. I wish you the best. All right. So let's mark this place. And I just give the guys like let's let's go. We all you know we all need to rest. We have Sparky here and is back. But we're all pretty beat up. But uh, um, you know Zith has been working uh, on some artif- artificer type skills. Um, so he would be interested in what he's working on. And what Zip might pick up from that uh, cog uh, or gear that he got thrown. And he might even kn- know something about like what sort of piece it might be. I mean, we're going to identify a bunch of stuff when we get home. So I'm not worried about the magicalness. But could I tell, like, was it anything but a simple clock that he was making? That nope, just looks like uh, maybe that flywheel that was in it um, made it some kind of... Uh, what, what, Grant it some magical properties. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Some tinkering. Okay. Well, uh, anything else in the room that we should take a peek at before we move on? Just uh, what's on his workbench, which he seems in uh, b- busy using. Okay. Well, guys, I, I really do think that, w- that we should get back. We we need to rest up and we we can talk about if we go to, uh, to um, Never Ember. Um, but how does everybody feel like getting out of here? Yeah, I would agree. We're pretty spent here. Sounds good to me. We yep. definitely rest. Goodbye for now, Shenzarian. Shenzarian, I hope to see you again, and thanks for the gift. Well, it's very kind of here. you. Um, good luck. Thanks for taking care of the cult. Dreadful sword. Agreed. Yep. <clears throat> okay. All right. So with that, uh, you have pretty much searched every corner except the great room. There was that room that had the grate in it. You kind of left that alone. That oh, had yeah. that little harp in it, right? Oh. Check that out. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, let's check it out. It has a harp in it? Yes. Oh. Indeed. Too bad we barred with us. Yeah, so this is um, this is the the grate that um, was in the first room. Like, you came in and then you went down the stairs, you fought the whites, went through the um, broken walls tunnel into the big room and the first door at the top on the right had that grate in it right yep and so that is the only other room you didn't really spend time in sure there was another but um i don't think you really did much with that um it was just a uh 
a storage room anyway you look at that and it was just a storage and kind of had an outhouse uh latrine area made the room stinky um just because you know it's uh, you know it only gets used for one real thing so anyway uh the great room though looks like it's been left alone it has um a metal grate over the ground that takes up about five foot square it has holes between you know the waffle design right that just goes down um like about three feet to the bottom where there's some papers that are scattered around and then what looks like a gold harp Yeah, I would go try and figure out what, you know, get close enough to examine it to see if it seems safe to pick up. It doesn't. You I mean, took a quick look with your eye and you assumed it was trapped. It was trapped. There's, there's blood and stuff. Yeah, you. Yeah. that was your initial impression, right? Does it feel like I could go try and disengage that trap? I'm pretty good at that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sure. All right. So I, I would tell I the guys what I'm about to do and I would hand over the bag of holding and my staff and just say, keep these, um, keep these, uh, tight. And I would cast my, my, um, may chant out. So I had another hand to, you know, do basic stuff with, mm -hmm. and I would tell the guys to stand, to stand back and I would investigate to see. Sort of what trap it was and what I could find out about it and how I could think about disengaging. Okay. It. Make a slide of hand check. Yeah. Or no, investigation. In order to try to disarm the trap, yeah. it would be investigation. Yeah, like to figure out where the parts are that I would need to man manipulate. Let's go. Uh-oh. Yep. You roll a crappy roll and still get a 17. You yep. you discover that um, if you were to put more than 10 pounds of pressure on any part of the grate, the grate has these uh, razor-like, because you almost lost a hand trying to figure it out, um, shoo, and they slide across uh, and would um, remove body parts uh, of anything sticking down through the grate. So it looks like it's a trap. Um, um, the only way yeah. really to foil the trap that you can find is to not put any pressure on the grate. Yeah. And is the grate like wide enough where we could stick a body part down there without triggering it probably sure, if you wanted not. to do like a if you wanted to do like a mission impossible kind of setup you could probably do that yeah or you could use fly so, maybe mm -hmm. but it's down How right it's, looks like it's pretty valuable looks looks nice but not how heavy does it look uh it's solid gold and it's it's not very big it's still just just enough that you could maneuver it <clears throat> with care. You could maneuver it up and through the the op one of the openings in this grate. Well, it looks like it weighs more than like ten pounds. Let's say. Oh yeah, probably. Or, or five pounds. It's it's close. Mage hand isn't an option. Yeah. N no, mage hand won't be enough. Hmm. All right, I gather the guys is around while well, we could and describe it. Sorry, Jim, is it on the floor going down? Yes. Is it like, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. So how would fly help? Uh, to hover or, or levitate, to hover over. Levitate. The, without putting your weight on the grate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's kind of in the middle. Yeah. So I would tell the guys like, I mean, you guys still have some fly on you. We could give it a try, um, hang, hang a... Hang a you know a rope and you know fashion a hook of some sort. Um, that's what you're talking about. Like that's how big the grate would be. We'd have to like 
place yeah. an operation to like pull it out. I think you'd have to use some of your your actual hands to manipulate the harp to get it to come up through the hole. I, it seems to be that maybe the harp was either got lucky getting through the grate to get down there or somehow was put down there before the grate was put over it. Because it it looks like it might barely, it would take some like some sleight of hand maneuvering to get it up. And yeah. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell the guys my plan, um, you know, somebody is up on top. We put a rope down there with a hook and then I could, um, I'd have to re cast fly, but I could get us all sort of airborne and I could try and uh, finagle it through the last mile. Once we get it up towards them. The great, if we want to give it a try, I'm I'm game for it. It sounds fun. And it looks very valuable. Yep. Definitely That's could help good. me buy a magic item or a hand of Vecna or something like that, you know. Be great. Hand of Vecna. That sounds fun. Yeah. So um I have to do some stuff. I sort of forget I forget um I the guys are already flying. Sorry. I'm looking to see if there's if I've got anything that can help out. Hang on a second. Anything in my spell slots. Meanwhile, Zip is like sort of taking out some rope from his pack. Um I've got fifty you know, but two, so in case we yeah. need I fashion a hook out of some metal or is one of my tools um and i would give it to uh i was like who who wants to be on top who has this dead eddie's hand it just said oz's is dead yeah i know you've been red for a while dude i don't know what's going on well i i was just wondering would fairy fairy fire Help us out here. I don't think so. Like you, like what, like what, like what we need is some sort of telekinetic. Uh, it's gotta be an object. Thing. I have a catapult, but that's only for ten pounds. Nobody has like gaseous form. Oh, how how? Sorry, Jim. How far is it from the from the floor to the to the bottom where the harp is? It's a about two and a half, three feet. So you might be able to reach your arm all the way down and, you know, get some fingers around it and pull it up. But we, we can, like, there's no way somebody could teleport down there and teleport out. It's too small of an area. It's not that small. You can teleport down there. You oh. just have to be, like, laying down. It's three feet, three feet deep. Oh, well, Zith would be like, all right, hold on one second. Let me try this. He would use his free version of a misty step to get in there. Bam. See, okay. See how that works. Mm -hmm. And if I if it seems to work okay, I'd I'd grab a hold of the of the of the harp and as many papers as I could get my hands on, and I'd bam out of there using a second level slot. Well, I have a word. I have word of recall. I'm. I don't know. What it doesn't say is how long does it take to set you have up? To set it up, yeah, you have to create, and it's got to be in a holy place. So you can have word of recall to your temple in Leylon. Yeah, but I would have had to set that up before. Yep. Did we do? Yeah, I know. Nope. All right. So um, while you guys are mucking around with this. Um, we're going to cut the camera to the entrance to the tomb where a shadowy figure slides in between the doors, um, his silhouette against the backdrop of the morning light. You guys are messing around in there enough. The dawn is just uh, starting to come up in Neverwinter and um, quietly uh, and cautiously the silhouetted figure climbs step by step down into the catacombs into the room that had the whites in it and from there 
slowly and carefully goes uh, through the uh, the caved in wall tunnel um, and comes out into the larger room where he can then see um, where you probably have cast a light spell, I would think, not fearing for discovery, but to be able to see better, like in color, for example, um, while you're trying to get this uh, thing down there. So y'all are down there like you're playing marbles, trying to figure out how to get through the grate. And um, Cassius, you recognize uh, by reputation and description uh, who these guys are. Uh, there is Canaeus, who is a rune knight. There is Ozus, a, a tiefling cleric of uh, Kasuth. There is a dwarf cleric of Moradin. And then there is an elf wizard. And um, within uh, the, what you can see through the door into this room, it looks like they're trying to figure out. There's discussion going on, and you stealthily move up. You'll need to decide at what point is it appropriate for you to reveal yourself to them um, before they discover you. Um, and so I imagine you may not want to just startle them, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll let you decide how to do that. So right. you guys, uh, I, you have um, learned of this crew um, and that they are up here. In, they are up in Neverwinter. Uh, because you spoke with people in the town of Leylon, um, and they said that um, that you had just missed them, and that they traveled by ship up to Neverwinter. You don't have a ship, so you have to get there the old-fashioned way. Um, and so you are a little behind in uh, arriving, and so the, here you are. So you you have um, followed these gents by reputation as well because they have been touted in Fandolin as uh, heroes and in Leylon as heroes as well. So you know this to be a good group and a group you probably could use to help with a very clear and present problem in the Mirror of Dead Men um, that is um, soon to be a problem for Leylon as well. So you come to kind of warn them maybe and offer to uh, have them help you to take care of the problem etc right okay okay and so that's what has brought you here you followed them you're trying to track them down so that you can get them back to Leylon to take care of or to defend it against imminent attack lucky for all of you undead don't travel quickly <laughs> All right, so the rest of you are trying to get in there, trying to figure out what you're going to do. So what's your plan now that I've interrupted you and I'm back? So I'm going to Misty step in there and mm -hmm. Misty step out and hopefully come out with the heart. Okay. How big is the heart? How much does it weigh? It's uh, probably close to 15 pounds. And as you pick it up, you realize this is a significant... Um, piece of art and um it, you're you're gonna guess it's pretty close to about 2500 gold in value what i mean i'm gonna identify it later on but would i get a sense that there's any magic to it no. to to it that's what zit's more interesting none, none whatsoever okay okay well hopefully i can zap in there and zap out and um, All right, and so as you zap out, I want you to make a perception roll. Yep. And um, Cassius, I want you to make a stealth roll. Right. Oh, Cassius, you're going down, friend. Oh, no, it kills me. I don't see anything. He's obviously, he's looking around for me. You're rolling from D&D &D Beyond, it looks like, so it comes across not looking the same. 
That's fine. It looks like you rolled a 27. I rolled a 27 so, against my yep. 22. Yep. Yep. He wins. So you, you don't see him. So yep. Cassius, you almost, as he teleports up, he's like looking right in your direction as he reappears up uh, again. And so you quickly are kind of ducking into the uh, uh, back around the corner of this room. So for the brief moment where he pops up, there's a look like he's kind of looking around for me. I mean, no, but he could okay. have very easily just okay. seen you appearing in. Right. So I'm going to just kind of clear my throat. <laughs> Zith would immediately turn around with like the firebolt finger out pointed at that cough. Reveal yourself. And I'm revealed. I'll step forward. What about... do, what do mm -hmm. we see? Paint the picture. Paint. So, see a uh, human, probably about 5'10", uh, roughly about 165, 170 pounds. Uh, kind of uh, chestnut brown hair, uh, olive skin, uh, carrying, a, carrying a loot on his back. He's got uh, a rapier, uh, quite a few daggers, uh, wearing a red traveling cloak, uh, cloak uh, night blue stud leather armor, and uh, dark brown breeches. Um, he's kind of smiling at you. Doesn't look like he's making a move to uh, reach for a weapon or anything like that. Perfect time to shoot him. Right. <laughs> ah, what are you doing you must, here? And now, now, just to, as you said before, I would know who this is. I've got the reputation. Ah, uh, yeah, you know them by name. Yeah. Right. Ah. Uh, Zin Znira, I presume. Zid would slowly drop his finger like to 45 degrees. Yes. And you are? Cassius. Cassius Crux. I'm a traveler on the Sword Coast. A performer. A friend of the people, you could say. Uh, I've been seeking out you and your companions as uh, I have news of uh, some dire consequences that might fall the region in the near future. Zid would look around at the guys. He's holding his harp. He's very excited about it. We're seeing if the other guys believe him and if somebody pipe, pipes up. How is uh, Sparky reacting to all this? Sparky is this. sniffing the air. Um, okay. But not growling or anything. Okay. So I, I, I introduced myself that I'm Ozis. I'm the tiefling of the group. Um, I want to be cleric. And then I do a little fire thing with my hands. Right. <clears throat> he has a large dog, by the way. It's a big mastiff. Right. And it has um, uh, a coat. Fire features. <laughs> it has a coat that um, is kind of a reddish uh, color with mm -hmm. um, lighter highlights. So it almost looks like he's on fire. And then I bought this little bag of burnt bacon and I throw it to him and I ask you I hope you're a big fan of burnt bacon <laughs> oh wow he can help us with the heart Zid is not giving up that heart um, <clears throat> so Cassius did you what like how did you find us are you stalking us what's happening what is this news well, I wouldn't say stalking, but I've certainly been trying to reach you. As I said, uh, the dire consequences of which I speak are uh, the cult of Miracle, uh, the god of death, uh, his uh, high priest, uh, Ularon Mortis, has been establishing clandestine organizations all around the Sword Coast, and uh, my brothers and I have been trying to do battle with him, and found out he's learned, trying to learn a location of... Uh, the Dracolich Ebeneth. Yeah, so uh, what we'll fill you in that um, that we haven't done yet because we haven't gotten to it. Okay. He he tells the story of how he went to uh, Tresendar Manor um, hearing uh, tales from a dead cleric, uh, the ghost of a dead cleric, telling that maybe the uh, Tresendar Manor is the last place where the Necropolis Shard was located uh, or known to be. And so he traveled there and found the place empty, 
found it, uh, it kind of cleaned out that there was evidence of some people living there, some bandits or somebody living there, but they were gone. And, um, and he was unable to discover anything about, uh, this necropolis shard. Um, but you did find that there was, uh, the basement underneath Tresendar Manor is kind of where you found where these, uh, this was some kind of a hideout maybe or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were behind uh, secret doors that were very easy for you to notice and move around because they had, they were a jar and that sort of thing. Um, so you left there and then found out later that you were followed by Ularan Mortis, that for a change he was tracking you, and uh, you let him to Tresendar Manor. So once you found that out, by being someplace else, you went back and discovered that um, it looks like he um, was able to get down into the, there was this crevice in part of the um, basement area. There was a place that was split and asunder and there was this crevice and um, <clears throat> there was a rope that went down there, et cetera. And he, so that wasn't there before. So you go down there and it looked like there was uh, just these black crystal um, remains, just little slivers of some black crystal, like onyx colored. And so you, um, you became concerned about that and began to retrack uh, where Ulran Mortis went and went over the Sword Mountains where it looks like uh, maybe by the time you got to tracking that far, that there was already some issue there with um, <clears throat> something going on at a at a, a, a keep up in the mountains up there, and then down into the Mirror of Dead Men um, on the other side, and from there you discovered from the local denizens. You found um, some bullywugs and such that you were able to um, calm them down enough to find out you offered him lots of, uh, you know, little trinkets or whatever. <clears throat> no big deal. You played for them and um, won them over. And they told you about the undead population and that there was a war priest. They were um, <clears throat> that they had indeed released. Um, Ebon Death, but Ebon Death was in a green body now. And you're able to figure out after discussing with them that Ebon Death, as a spirit um, of the Dracolich, the, the actual soul, possessed um, uh, Clagia Limater, which is the green dragon, ancient green dragon from the Crypt Garden Forest. And um, so now Ebon Death possesses um, old Nawbone, and they plan on attacking Leylon for some reason. The Bullywugs don't care. They're, they'd actually be happy to see the, the Mirror of Dead Men expand further, and they think maybe that this giant dragon creature would be able to make it do that. So, but you quickly left, stopped in Leylon, they confirmed that indeed um, these heroes are residing here as a base of operations to protect the town. And that um, if you've heard more, that there is definitely an urgency to come back, that the, the undead army is marching. And that's kind of what you heard, is the undead army is marching, led by the Draco Lich in the Green Dragon's body and Ularan Mortis. And so they have asked you to, um, with all due haste, they they give you a horse, etc., so you can try to make, or a, a you know, horse and wagon or what have you, so you can try to make quick uh, quick travels to Neverwinter and catch up that those that the rest of them just left by, by ship by the time you got there. But literally, it was just hours, hours apart. And so you need to try to get up to Neverwinter by land. They're out to sea, so there's no way for them to uh, for you to catch up to them, we'll say. And so that's what where you caught up. So 
that's what you know now is that attack is imminent. All right. I will. Uh, like any day I'm, now. Right. I will impart that to everyone. Okay. Well, shit. Uh, guys, no time to long rest. We can do that. We port things on a ship. Actually. We have to go to. We have to go to Neverember and ask for for more support. We did. We we did what he wanted us to do. Let's go do that on the way to the to our ship. I think we should give them the report, tell them what we found, and bring Cassius with us, and have Cassius tell him what we've been telling him for weeks now. Zith is horrified. He's down to get down there. He wants Ularan more than any human alive. As soon as you're an elf, that's interesting. Sorry, what? Seeing as you're an elf, that's interesting. What? You want him dead more than any human alive. Yes, for sure. There may be some elves who want him dead more than you, but you definitely want him dead more than any human alive. I'm just kidding. Yes. I'm I'm just I'm harassing you. (laughs) Okay. So uh you offer um, the boat ride back to a potential new friend, and you will now have uh, two days, basically, to. Um, but can we go to Never Ember first and tell him what we found out, sure. give him the information, and ask yep. for more troops? Okay, so you go to Castle Never, and uh, Never Ember is there, and uh, he will see you, and he's very happy. Uh, he has heard. Already from two of the hostages, um, that he's heard that they are back again. He's not sure where one of them is, but he knows the other one uh, is safe back with um, their colleagues and family. Um, and and we then, tell him about um, Umberto, who we found past him, right? Yeah, he says that's unfortunate. Um, I guess you know, he just couldn't move fast enough to get there in time. But uh, you did save three of them, so um, thank you very much. I'm delighted that you've done that. Lord, so, never... Yep, go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't I didn't know if he was done. No, he will... Um, he will offer to uh, reward you with your own um estates in the city and uh he says you just pick them out we have uh, still plenty of vacancies and i will set crews to work to make any re- renovations that are necessary to bring it into um good living order and he offers sure, the we- same he offers the same to your new companion as well and says uh for certain you simply choose uh, where you would like to be uh, to live here in uh, in Neverwinter, and um, it shall be yours. Oh, thank you, my lord. Hold on, hold on. Zith would back it up. Like... Yeah. yeah. But we don't have the time. Our, our new <laughs> companion here has just informed us that Neverwinter is, is about to be under siege by the by an army of the undead. Oh my. Well, that's in, not good. In exactly the way that we warned you. And I know that you've given us some troops so far, but listen to his story. We will need many, men anymore. And we have to march down to Leylan as soon as possible. We are leaving after we are done speaking with your eminence. Okay, are you going to march with... Um any new contingents that I'm able to offer? We oh, will march with them if we can't put them on our boat. We, one of us will march with them and the rest will go by boat to get there as fast okay. as possible. Because, you know, I could send a dozen if you'd like. Is They'll there any your, more? They should fit there, on your boat. Is there any more you could spare? Well, they'll have to march down. That's okay. I will speak with my generals and find out what we can spare from here. I do not 
have any intention of making Neverwinter vulnerable while trying to help you. Yes, I understand. I understand. Yeah, of course. But if you could uh, speak to your generals ASAP, that we, we'd be deeply indebted. Okay. Now we'll see what I can do. And you have my thanks for saving the uh, these members of our society here. We appreciate it. Yes. On your next return, you may pick out what you're looking for. Did did you happen to speak to the actress? Uh, no, she's the one that we cannot find. Oh, she's she's okay. Uh, she slipped her grasp, but she is alive. I'll tell. I'll say that. Hmm. Okay. Well, we certainly want to keep her safe. We don't want her to get abducted again or come under any other duress or harm. So. If you see her again, um, make sure she's safe, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so I would say, I know this we, is awful, yeah. but we probably split up. Like, some of you guys should go jump on the boat now with Cassius and just get down there. And then a couple of us can march with the with the troops. So it'll be a big difference in time yep um between i mean it's going to take it's pretty much takes half a 10 day or, or a little bit more about half a 10 day to travel by land and it takes about two days Dude. to travel by ship so there's three days difference it could yeah it's a good point is it is there any bigger ship that we I thought our ship like was how... yeah, our ship is our ship is pretty fast, big, right? But small. I mean, it's pretty small, though, right? It's small, but it's fast. Yeah. We. So, Tim, how many people could fit in our ship? Uh, crew, and passengers. I believe it's about forty. If I remember correctly. I really doubt he'll give us that many soldiers, so, you know, I think we should be good to take whoever he, he gives us. So you've already got 250 okay. more down there. Yeah. Okay, let's see what he gives us. Um, but maybe you're right. Maybe we just take however many we can fit on the ship and we get out of here. Okay. Does that sound like a plan, guys? Like the plan. Yeah. The only other option is we ask him for a bigger ship, but it might be slower. It's going to be slower. Yeah. And, so you and, we, organize it. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, he can send a dozen with you right away. We'll take them. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys um, head on over to your boat uh, in the dock district, and from there, you hit the seas. Now, while you were gone, um, they did recruit um, your your drow friends. Did recruit some more uh, crew from Neverwinter, so you have like pretty much half a complement of crew. Um, which covers sailing and shifts, etc. Right? Mm. So you don't you don't have all forty. You got twenty guys on there that are a new crew, and still others that are supplemented by drow. Um, and so from there you um, and of course the crew that's there was not real happy about drow, um, being on the boat, but. The, the non-drow recruiters, which were the, the two captains, because um, they're wearing their disguises, they convince them that they're uh, only for this last uh, leg of the trip, and then they will be departing, which is probably true. 
So you guys um, start heading south down um, the coast, and you will arrive back in Leylon in two days. So you can go ahead and take a long rest, all of you. Um, and what else do you want to do on your boat? You said you had some things you wanted to identify, you wanted to go over. Yeah, so I so some role play, we, yeah. whatever you want to do. Yeah, so after um, we take a rest, because that's the first thing we need, um, Zith would uh, start to identify all the objects from the crypt and the harp. Um, I know that I know that you said that the harp was not magical, but I would go through everything, um, as well as try to find out more about Cassius and where he came from, and sort of you know get to know him a bit more and size him up to see if he could be a stormbreaker, if he's just sort of a, a guy that. We're gonna know for a little, a little bit. I'm I, and Zith would be obsessed with the making plans, um, and really thinking through the strategies to take out Ularan Mortis. Indeed. All right. So, are you going to identify your magic items through trial and error, or are you going to? Because that's one using of the, the methods, identify, right? or you can use the identify using the spell. identify ritual. Yeah, uh, using the ritual. Yeah. I Clearly, took out my. Clearly Pearl. a sign of not being low level anymore, right? We don't need yeah. to try to figure out what this magic item is. All right. So what are we going to start with? Um, the, the necklace globe. that you have? Or the globe. All, All right. right. Let's start with the globe. So the globe, Robbie, mm -hmm. um, Ozis, is a, it's called a drift globe. Okay. This is an uncommon wondrous item. It is a small sphere of thick glass. It weighs about a pound. Uh, and if uh, you are within 60 feet of it, you can speak its command word, which is revealed to you through the identify spell. And you will cause it to emanate the uh, the light spell or the daylight spell. Once Great. used, the, uh, the daylight effect can't be used again until the next dawn. How much um, a minute? Radiate light or daylight. You need to go look it up just as the yeah. spell. You can speak another command word as an action um, to make the globe, the illuminated globe, then rise. So you can light it up and then speak another word as an action, and it will rise up into the air and float no more than five feet off the ground. The globe hovers uh, in this way until you or another creature grasps it. If you move more than 60 feet from the hovering globe, it will follow you until it is within 60 feet of you. It takes the shortest route to do this. It, uh, if it's prevented from moving, the globe sinks gently to the ground and becomes inactive and its light winks out. Mm. Okay. Cool. Okay. So your necklace um, that you got, this turns out to be a necklace of adaptation. It is also a wondrous uncommon item. Um, requires attunement. I think the drift globe also requires attunement. Uh, no, it does not. Um, but the necklace does. Necklace requires attunement. Yeah. While wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment. And you have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors, such as cloud kill, stinking cloud, etc. Inhaled poisons, breath weapons of some dragons, like, I don't know, green ones. Um, and so there you go. Gives you advantage on saving throws and you can breathe in any environment. The, uh, the, yep. um, the engraving on it, of course, says, uh, Caveta. Caveta. Yeah. You know, here is my breath. It Take somewhere. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? Anything? Uh, what do we? The helmet. Yeah, 
What about the helmet? helmet? Is not magical. Is it gold? It is gold. What do we think it's worth? Um, two hundred fifty gold. Okay. Um, was there anything else? Uh, oh, the harp. Not magical. You, you, not you magical. Said, but about twenty five hundred gold. Yeah. So that. So, question for the necklace: Did I give this resistance against uh, uh, poison ability? Does it what? Does it give this uh, poison resistance? The From necklace? The... No, no, just advantage yeah. on saves. So, guys, I have two potions of poison resistance, and there are now three people who need it. Uh, who needs it? Wait. Uh, actually, wait. Ozzy, you had bought your own potion, didn't you? Say that one more time. Uh, Ozzy, did you buy your own potion of poison resistance? Yeah, I have two of them. Oh, yeah, no, I bought the other one for Samara and she's not here anymore. Right. Oh, she's okay. And I don't well, know if I... that'll help. Anyway, I have no time to worry about her. We have, I have two, two bottles of the potion of poison resistance. So and I so does Ozzy. <clears throat> Ezra and me already have poison resistance because you weren't as good as Nimbi and Dwarf and me being a rune knight. Ah. Got it. Okay. So, Smith, you guy, you're getting potions of poison resistance. Alright. Remember, you also have a couple of books you put in your... Yeah. Um, bag of holding, one that describes the eye of Vecna and hand of Vecna. Yep. A masterpiece of writing and artistic illumination. I've been studying worth... that very uh, yep. intent intently. That's, that's worth a few hundred gold to the right person. Nope. A, <clears throat> there's a book of nonsensical poetry called Quite Good Verse. Nothing good about the poetry, really, but the cover is kind of uh, gold-plated, so it's worth a couple hundred gold. <clears throat> and you found another book about Neverwinter's history that contains a spell scroll. Oh, I missed that. A couple of pages are actually spell scrolls. And I handed what? those pages automatically to Zed. Do we know what the spells are? If you identify, you can, yeah. Yeah. So you'll learn that one is a spell scroll of greater invisibility, and one is a spell scroll of major image. Ooh, major image. I ever wanted to toy with that. Okay. Um... Uh, Zed, do you see the, uh, me trying to give you the, the potion of poison resistance? I'm sorry, what? See the, the pop up for me trying to give you the potion? Oh, uh, I do. I do. Yeah. Yep. Done. Okay. I my guys don't give you but some both. I need, to, but I can't find chassis on here. So. You don't see chassis. So uh, no, I accidentally gave both some to Jeff. So this is one of those to Cassius as soon as you can. Yep. Everybody can see Cassius. Um, is that no. some quote? Because I, I can't see him. I can't see me either. You have a. You can't see you either. No. Oh well, you're you're not there on the map. Here, no, right. I can map. see Zamara. Happy now? You're on the map. There we go. Here's there he Zamara. is. I meant in the actor tab, but yeah, there you go. I do not see him in the actor. Oh, in the actor tab. I don't see him on the left. Under PCs, thing. the right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, under PCs, the red folder. He's under there. There you go. Hmm. 
Mine is definitely outdated. It has, under PCs, it says, um, oh, it just changed. So there's under, Zith there's, OG. <laughs> yeah, there's that's the one that had the wrong, that had the wrong uh, URL. So I created a new character it. and resynced it. Got it. Got it. Um, the only thing I I I saw, I mean, we could do that after the the session. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Well, that's all good about the stuff. Um. In getting to know Cat Cassius a bit, is it clear that um, like, do we have a sense of like, is he a bard, uh, a whole bard? Is he mixed with something? Like, does he have some other traits that seem interesting for a bard to have? Um, I can tell you a little bit about myself if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm uh, yes. just uh, relating this to everyone or whomever is asking as we travel. Uh, so I was born to the family of entertainers. Uh, I've, yeah, I'm the youngest of four brothers. Uh, we used to travel up and down the Sword Coast performing for commoners and nobles alike. Well-versed in song, dance, and many musical instruments. My specialty, however, is that of the blade. I uh, perform sword swallowing, juggling of daggers, feats of acrobatics. Uh, my brothers, uh, Tobin, a very adept wizard, Hawthorne, a woodsman, and uh, Solomon, who uh, is uh, delved into eldritch knowledge. I grew up as followers of Tamora, a goddess of good fortune, and always pay homage to her whenever near one of her temples. As uh, my brothers and I traveled the realms, uh, our exploits caught the attention of the Harpers, who recruited us as agents due to our talents and the ability to appear as innocuous wandering performers. Uh, recently, however, in uh, doing battle with uh, Ulleron Mortis, uh, sadly my brother Solomon fell in battle, and my brother Tobin uh, was injured to a point where he can only do research. And that's uh, that's about my story. Oh. Uh. Ulleron has taken down great men i've seen it he is uh he's a scourge upon this earth and we shall we shall we shall exact revenge for your brother for your brother and for myself Ularan is also uh he didn't do do me in but he put me uh in a very very uncomfortable position earlier in life and uh i've been looking for him and i've had visions i would tell Cast. He's about these persistent um, visions that Zith's had. He's a he's he's a wizard. He would tell you that, and he does get sort of visions sometimes. And one or a, a couple of them have been very clear visions of Ulran Mortis leading an army of the dead uh, into Leylon, um, and there being a battle for the ages, and potentially uh, it moving further than that, and Evan Death. Um, obviously helping him from the skies. And we watched, uh, unfortunately, Edmund Death take the, take uh, Claudia, Claudia, old Nawbone. <laughs> um, we saw Edmund Death, we saw the moment when Edmund Death took over old Nawbone, and we knew, um, and we actually came to Neverwinter to get more troops. We have some waiting there, we just got some more. Uh, but this is the fight that we've been gearing up for for weeks. Well, it seems I've come to the right people then. Do any can any of your harpers help us? Is there a sort of just some siren call to get some harpers towards Ley Leylon? Because we could use every able-bodied man or woman that we can. Does anything come to mind? Ooh, we mm. should all but we'll know that. Uh... We have a pack with the wizard folk. Oh, so, right. I forgot about that. I'll have to see what they're going to do. Cool. Okay. Uh, um, yep. Zith would be very uh, protective of the Book of Vecna, um, knowing that um, he has different ideas about uh, that book than most of his friends do. Um, and he wouldn't want Canaeus or any of the others to try and sort of, in quotes, save him from this terrible, amazing, beautiful information. Um, but the rest of the stuff, you know, we can figure out if we sell or not sell. Um, it does make sense if we have the necklace to give it to someone. 
to attune to. So I don't know uh, if any of you guys want it. I mean, Ezra, you probably don't need it, but Ozis you get first dibs um if not we can give it to i can take it i mean i mean i shouldn't take it but maybe cassia should it's the necklace where you can breathe in any um in any environment and you have advantage on saves against poison or other <clears throat> airborne effects uh and Oz's, if you don't take it we'll give it to cassius because i don't know how many ma magic items he has um but uh i'm running low on an attunement slots and i just want to keep one up jim one thing yeah. we did not identify i'm sorry the gear that i got from uh the oh the fishman yep this acts as a stone of luck okay what does that mean Stone of Luck. Mm -hmm. Should I look it up? Yeah, go look uh, it up. Okay. I I'll I will up. tell you also that as you pour in, since you brought up um, the book about the Eye and Hand, um, you you learn that um, a little bit of background about it. Seldom is the name of Vecna spoken, except in hushed voices. Vecna, so you've learned that using his name may bring attention to you. Mm -hmm. So you may, um, I don't know how you feel about that, but that may cause you to um, bring your companions here to the point of not using his name. Yep. Like, you know, Moldavort. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, through dark magic and consequence, he forged a terrible empire. For all his power, Vecna couldn't escape his own mortality. He began to fear death and take steps to prevent his end from ever coming about. Orcus, the demon prince of undeath, taught Vecna a ritual that would allow him to live on as a lich. Beyond death, he became the greatest of all liches. Even though his body gradually withered and decayed, Vecna continued to expand his evil dominion. So formidable and hideous was his temper that his subjects feared to speak his name. He was the Whispered One the master of the spider throne, the undying king and the lord of the rotted tower. Some say that Vecna's lieutenant, Cass, coveted the spider throne for himself or that the sword um, he, that his lord made for him, right? So Vecna made a sword for Cass seduced him into rebellion. Whatever the reason, Cass brought the Undying King's rule to an end in a terrible battle that left Vecna's tower a heap of ash. Of Vecna, all that remained were one hand and one grisly, um, one and one eye, both grisly artifacts that still seek to work uh, the Whispered One's will in the world. The eye of Vecna and the hand of Vecna might be found together or separately. The eye looks like a bloodshot organ torn from the socket. And the hand is a mummified and shriveled left extremity. Um, attunement is easy. All you have to do is gouge out your own left eye and press the artifact into the empty socket. Likewise, chop off your left hand and press the artifact against the left forearm and it will graft itself to you. Okay, that's... Yeah, no one's going to do that. So the... Some of the things the eye bestows upon 
and again, this is research um, from watching people with the eye or the hand, um, that the bearer of the eye can see through solid objects, has clairvoyance, um, crown of madness, disintegrate, yeah. dominate, dominate monster, I bite. Some of these are recorded abilities of the eye. But also, the bearer of the eye is also immune to disease and poison. Immune. Um, you never... Using the eye's um, x-ray vision never causes you to suffer exhaustion. You experience premonitions of danger. And it regenerates you. If the same person is the bearer of the eye and the hand, the powers increase in an order of magnitude. And did it go over what the hand does or? Uh, yeah, there's some notes on that too. Uh, you can also, by the way, um, speak your desires and it is granted every month. Like the wish spell or? Yeah. Wow. I'd be I'd be breathlessly telling Ken it's like all of the all the things it does. Like see? But wait, we there's have more. To find it. Oh, okay. So the the hand and and there are other abilities that seem to present themselves upon attunement with the artifact. So those are those will forever be unknown until uh, a person attunes. So all when the you, other things can be done without attunement? No, they all oh. requires attunement to do anything, but there are Got additional it. powers that are manifest upon attunement. Yeah. Um, the bearer of the hand strength increases massively to that of a giant's strength. Oh, okay. Um, any melee spell attack that you make with the hand and any melee weapon attack made with a weapon held by the hand deals a lot more damage. The hand um, seems to also be able to point a finger and shoot a ray that kills people instantly. Can put people to sleep with a wave of the hand, can slow people by holding the hand, the hand toward people and can teleport with a snap of a finger. Other things would be along the same lines as the eye. Um, where, let's see. Um, <clears throat> if a creature has a skeleton, you could attempt to turn its bones to jelly with the touch of the hand. Um, also has regenerative powers like the eye does. So, yeah, those pretty long, pretty well go along with it. So at the end, uh, Zith would be explaining all these things sort of breath breathlessly and say, Canaeus, it could be the thing we need to beat at and death. I know we don't have time, but maybe later really truly believing that Canaeus might might be swayed by what I just told him. <laughs> Zith. <laughs> we we saw who these things belong to. Did he look like a good guy who was not gonna try to corrupt your soul and use you for some evil cosmic game against the the other gods? 
And that's just what I got from looking at him for 30 seconds. As we fell through the an endless void of darkness. As he was power. the lies the lies of people he had murdered across the multiverse. Think about no. what I just said. I'll take it under consideration. But you know, sometimes there there is a saying. Sometimes it's the it's the tools, not the thief. You know what I'm saying? Like uh I'm some people some other people I'm might some other people might say, don't hate the player, hate the game, you know? Yeah. I can eat okay. tools and the tools are body parts of an evil witch. We'll 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 have this fight when we uh when when we find them. But right now we have to be good. Don't be be like the failures who have to die to get good. (laughs) We we just have to focus now on Leilon. (laughs) Zith wants to end this conversation. He knows Kanaeus is not going to come over to to (laughs) to his side. He's not. I'm sorry, Cassie. We've had this fight before, and he will. I'm sorry you had to hear this on your first day with us, but he will. You know, he's acting like a a cliche of a wizard. Being power hungry and seeking immortality. He's a fucking elf. You're a fucking elf, dude. You're gonna live longer than any of us. <laughs> as long as you don't die in battle and get your soul destroyed. Oh yeah, did you tell him that that part, Jim? What? About my soul being bonded to the rune no. stone? No, he wouldn't know that. Okay, so Cassius, uh, so there's some other stuff that we should tell you. We've been doing this a while. We've ran into some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and one of them was there's this artifact called the Rune Stone. You may know about it. Um, it basically has the uh, power to give its owner or its possessor um, the ability to, is it turn back, like literally Do-overs. turn back? Yeah, turn back time and turn back actions, um, and it would be the it would its name ruins stone for a reason. It would be disaster if it, if it fell into the same hand, into the wrong hands. We found it. Um, it was being guarded by some by, in the ethereal plane by some uh, old guards of Leilon who devoted their afterlives to um, protecting it. Um, but but the only way to sort of blunt its its uh, power was to bind somebody's soul to it, and we did that. Um, but what that means is, if I was to die, that rune stone is it's. If I die, that rune stone is free to be possessed, and if somebody gets the rune stone and uses it, I will vanish from existence. Not, not to lay a lot on you on your first day. Um, I'm not super concerned about it right now. I'm really concerned about Ulleran and Mortis, but it is all connected. And Ulleran, we we think, um, is entering Leilan with the uh, with the intention of finding the Rune Stone. Um, so uh, I'm very invested, not just from our history, but from our future, um, to stop. Ulrand um, and end him, um, especially before he he gets to that rune stone, because that will be the end of the Sword Coast. I see. I'm quite dire. Very dire. Very dire. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what's up. And and then I sort of under my breath say like. And you wonder why I want immortality, right? Like Canaeus, he's out of his mind. Don't listen to him. The vet, the vet, the thing's great, but I'm, we can't do that now. I'm going to get you. Him. You would not. You would and not I, hear I this. This would be under celestial heaven. I am you going wouldn't to hear that in the library of my lord. <laughs> I think um, a wish spell could, could bring you back. Maybe. If only we had a wish spell and the hand or, of Vecna. Or a hand or an eye, yeah. Yep. 
Um, okay, so but and there's nothing in the book about um, where to start if one was to search for it. Um, there's no hints about that, right? It's just been, yeah. And I wouldn't think that the eye that we have is the actual eye of Vecna, right? It's just sort of a. Mm, I think it's, you you know, it's, it's like a trinket, a greater magical power. Yeah, yeah. Compared, yeah, yeah. compared, yeah. It's a, it's like a, a keychain fob. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's a, it's a fuzzy, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, fuzzy rabbit. dice. Yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Somebody else can take the spot the spotlight this is fun okay well you arrive back to Leylon to um some rain it's dark you um take a barge into town from your ship the crew will um, stay on the ship for now and they'll take turns having leave on the shore and uh, there are some still repairs that they're still doing on the ship as well so they'll be working on that while um they take turns going on their days off, etc. So you head back into um, Ley Lawn. You check in with the city with the town council. They're happy to have you back. They were concerned about some bard that came through, crying of you know imminent doom, imminent doom, or something like that. Oh, there he is. And uh, hello, welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you in the back there. And then. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so they're very concerned now that Ebendeth is going. We, I mean, they were worried about a green dragon before. Now they're worried about a green dragon with a Dracolich inside. That's not cool. And um, and so uh, you guys get settled back in, and the rain just gets heavier. And uh, the next day, uh, I'll, I'll say that the night is dark. And torrential rain beats down on the rooftops, leaving the city in mud and, uh, and puddles, muddy puddles. An hour before dawn, the bell on the newly erected south gate begins to toll urgently. A cry goes up around town from the wall, echoing across the town as troops dash to man their positions. The dead! The dead are coming! And that is where we will end for tonight. Like, are you referring to Jerry Garcia? or Yeah. yeah. Right. They're not, these are not Grateful Dead. They are okay. unhappy to be Un here. Ungrateful Dead. Yeah, they are the Ungrateful Dead. And they want a refund. Oh, a, warranty, man. Um, a warranty exchange. Do So we, we brought Cassius to our place. We showed him the place. Yep. He sort of yeah, we slept. We took a long rest. Um, I got to recharge my staff. I got to roll my portents. Yep, but had a couple um, of days to do that, and so yep. you'll get to roll your portents uh, before next session, and yep. uh, and we will begin. Cassius, you'll be a full fledged twelfth leveler by then, and be decked out in whatever your money the the best that your money can buy. Oh, I'm sure. Dead. Fantastic. And uh, so we'll see how much money you have to spend before we're all done. All right. Uh, good. Any questions tonight, guys? Well done. No. No, it's lots of... No, that, that was fun. Yeah. Awesome possum. All that right, guys. Go. So next week begins the Battle of Ley Lawn. Do we... Does oh. us have time to get in touch with, with the... Uh... Lizard folk. Uh, we'll assume that you've sent a runner or some messenger yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. Because the deal was that they would come to our aid and we would come to their aid in the case of, of an yeah. event like. So it seems to me like maybe in the town square there'll actually be a lizard yeah. man posted now and again, right? And um, I'm looking at notes here, <clears throat> and seven hundred thousand strong. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Easy, easy peasy, no problem on that. And big ones too, really. And they've got L's too, so yeah. All right, so uh, we will see you guys next week for literally the Battle of Ley Lawn, as it will go down in the annals of history, assuming someone is left to write it. Oh, right. this is bad.
to our internet audience. Have a good night. 